James Sunderland is the protagonist of Silent Hill 2, the cult classic critically acclaimed sequel to Silent Hill 1. James Sunderland was played by Guy Kihi, Guy Kaihi, Guy Chihi, Guy Kaihi did the voice for James Sunderland, the motion capture for James Sunderland, and his face became the basis for James Sunderland's face. For all intents and purposes, Guy Kihi is James Sunderland. Guy Kai Hai did not know that Silent Hill 2 was being re-released in HD, or if he did, he did not know that they were recasting all of the voices for Silent Hill 2. Guy has become something of a martyr among Silent Hill fans. He says he was unfairly treated by Konami executives, that Konami owes him money. And of course, Silent Hill fans, like any kind of fans, are going nuts because something is being changed in something that they love. So a lot of people have been rallying behind Guy. Along comes Troy Baker, who is the new voice of James Sunderland for the re-release of Silent Hill 2, who says that Guy Kihi is pretty much making things up. Saying that Konami doesn't owe him any residuals, that Guy was actually offered a role and then turned it down. So if anyone should be blamed, it should be Mr. Guy Kihi. And then Guy Chihi said that Konami did contact him. He said he was willing to talk, and then they moved ahead without telling him that they were going with other people. I can see both sides of the argument here. On one hand, Guy originated the role of James. It's a little surprising to me they didn't expect such a tumult from the fan base. On the other hand, I get why Konami wouldn't want to hire him back, especially if they may or may not owe him money. As an actor, I do feel bad for Kai Hee. The last time I heard about something like this was uh, back when Grand Theft Auto 4 came out, and the voice actors for Nico and Roman, you know, kind of want a little more money. But the Screen Actors Guild doesn't have a set of rules for video game acting. In fact, when that guy Kihi auditioned for the role in Japan and all the recording was done in Japan, that's a whole other set of rules, so who knows? What we do know is that Silent Hill 2 is being recast and people are going crazy. You got a lot of fans up in arms, like, I don't know, the Destructoid guy, who was like, the new acting is horrible, just horrible. And then you have other people railing against that, being like, what are you talking about? The old acting was horrible. Listening to all this, it's just gotta like, calm down. If the only contribution you can make to an argument is that this was good or this was bad, you've made no contribution to the argument. A lot of people seem to think that they're a great judge of acting because they've seen like the Oscars once. The fact is, acting isn't just being good or being bad. It's like, if you paint a bedroom, there's lots of colors you can choose. There aren't just good and bad ones. Choosing different colors does different things to the room. Similarly, certain kinds of performances provide certain kinds of results. I personally think the voice acting in Silent Hill 2 is perfect for Silent Hill 2. Consider, you're in a world that is constantly testing you. A world that hates you. A world that you don't understand. Imagine the relief that you would have if you were in Silent Hill and you met another person, someone human you could relate to. And then imagine your dismay when you find out that something's really wrong with them. All the performances in Silent Hill 2 have something slightly wrong with them. Everyone is kind of off. Everyone's on edge and you can never really tell what their intentions are. And you can't really trust what they say. But you're also not really certain if they're lying to you because they're trying to deceive you purposefully or if they're lying to you to protect themselves. Basically, everyone James meets is nuts, but then the lines begin to blur. What's so good about Kai Chihi's performance as James is that you never really know what's going on in his head. You can only assume you know because of what he tells you and because of what the game says. The fact is, you don't know. You don't know anything about James any more than you know anything about any of the other characters. As a result, there isn't a standard for normalcy. Every time you think you can find someone who you can sympathize with or you can trust, things change. When people say that someone gave a poor performance, what they really mean is is that their intentions were not clear or they were not consistent with the rest of the story. In the case of Silent Hill 2, inconsistency is consistent with the story. These manic performances with unclear intentions are part of Silent Hill 2. They're just as much a part of the game as the monster design, as the music, as the plot. That said, I'm not mad that they recast Silent Hill 2 for the HD re-release. I'm just a little disappointed. Mary McGlynn is the new voice director for the Silent Hill series. She did a great job on Shattered Memories, and she's a great actress besides. But I wonder what's going to be achieved in recasting the game. For one thing, as both an actor and an audience member, I am sick of the whitewashing that goes on in voice cast. Mary McGlynn and Troy Baker do not need more roles. Their voices are everywhere. They're like the new Steve Blums. Though I guess Steve Blum is still Steve Blum. There are so many other actors in the world. Why do I always have to hear these same people over and over and all these things? It makes it less unique. All I'm gonna think about Mary is that she sounds like the Major from Ghost in the Shell. And I just finished playing Catherine in which Troy Baker was Vincent. What was nice about the old cast is that I never heard them before and I'll probably never hear them again. The only thing that based my opinion on the actual performances are the few uploads by Konami. A new professional cast giving a by-the-books professional performance is not going to have the same weird, airy, kind of confusing quality that the original had. Which brings up another question. 
Who is the intended audience for this re-release? If it was for fans of the original, all they had to do was upgrade it to HD so it would look good on a big TV and people would buy it. And if you're making it for people who've never played the original before, is a new voice cast really going to change things? If they really wanted to get new people to play Silent Hill, they would do another reimagining, the way Silent Hill Shattered Memories reimagined the story of the, of the Silent Hill 1. Actually, that would be really cool. Re-releases are usually meant to make money rather cheaply that they spent money on new performances. How does that math work? Do I think that the new voices will ruin the game? No, but I do think they will change the game. And the real question I would ask Konami is, are you trying to enable people to re-experience an old thing? Or are you trying to make a new experience altogether? As it stands, I really can't tell. And since I own the original, I don't feel a need to buy the new one. Unless there's a new ending where Pyramid Head takes off his helmet and it's Guy Kihi.